So in this demo, I'm going to show you how to create a uh, bar chart in WPF, of course. And we're not going to use any third party, it's just going to be purely XAML and C Sharp. All right, that being said, let's go ahead and create a new project. That's going to be our target we want to achieve. All right, so let's click on, right click on the solution and add a new project. It's going to be WPF.NET Framework. Click Next. Let's call this bar chart. Demo. Let's create. Okay, first thing first, I'm going to make the solution as the startup project, I mean the project as startup project. And next, I'm going to flip my panes as I normally do. I'm going to adjust this panes and change the width to 400 for this guy. That's enough width for us at this point. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with changing this to a uh, stack panel, I think. Yes. All right. And let's go ahead and create our classes that we're going to use. So I'm going to have two classes. One of them is going to be the uh, the model, and the other class is going to supply us data. So public class, that's, I'm going to call this course, uh, two properties, string name, and integer grade. Okay, next the class that is going to provide the data, that's going to be a public class. And let's call this courses. Okay, we need the list property of list courses. So prop list course. And let's say course list. Okay, we're not going to initialize to anything yet. I'm going to need a method. It's public, static. Um, it's going to return a list of course objects. And let's call this, let's go with the suggestion, get courses. All right, return new list of courses let's add a few of them new course our name it's going to be matt let's go with a grade of uh, Seventy-five. Uh, great, of course. We need that property name. New course name. Science and let's get a grade of eighty-five.
new course um, name let's I think we had a science and misspelled science here. Um, English. Let's get a grade of 80. And uh, new course. I should copy and paste it. Totally forget about it. It's going to be art and grade is going to be 90. And let's call the to list method. And now we can set our property to this method to get courses. Okay, we are done with the C sharp part. Let's remove the stuff that we don't need. We can clean this up. Okay. Let's go back to our XAML. And let's add a new list box. Actually, before that, let's bring in data context. So, window, data context. That's going to be local courses. Perfect. Intelligence is really helpful most of the time. I would say 99% 90, of the time. All right, so inside our stack panel, let's add a list box. And let's set the item source to, well, actually, before the item source. Let's set the font size to 30. Um, item source, it's going to be binding courses, course list. Sorry, course list, yep. All right. Let's open close and we have our courses over there of course we don't want to show that let's but let's run this just to make sure it builds up all right it's all good let's uh, Add an item template. So list box item template. It's going to be a, we need the and insert a data template. And inside our data template, we are going to add a rectangle. Okay, this is, let's get a height of 30. And color, color of, should fill. Let's get this a red fill for now. Let's get a temporary width too. Let's make sure, okay. So, all right, it's creating our, our rectangles. Okay, so um, I don't need the width and I don't need the color for the time being. Okay, because that's going to all change. But we want to bind this. The width is going to be bound to. Great. Okay. Now, if I change the color, we should see a 
our grades showing up as they're supposed to. Again, we don't want to use this. We're going to create a uh, style for this rectangle. So I'm going to expand this rectangle and add a style to it. So rectangle dot style style target type it's going to be a rectangle and let's get a setter here uh, property fill so this one it's going to be let's go with black okay of course we don't want to keep it black so we need triggers to uh, change the color based on the course type or course name so style that triggers I'm gonna use data triggers um, Okay, inside our data trigger, I'm gonna um, use binding, and binding it's going to be the name property of the course, and the value we want to say if the value is met, then we want to set fill property fill to blue all right now we had matte in blue color I'm gonna copy and paste this data trigger a few times three four I think that covers all of them so I'm going to change this to science and change the color to go with dark cyan use crimson. All right, crimson is fine. Uh, I'm gonna go with orange all right so blue orange next is um, we want the uh, what was the next course English and art okay so in case of English we want the color to be red and in case of art we want green all right so we have all our colors perfect now I'm gonna add another text block here right below here that's gonna show us it's gonna tell us which color represent which class since we don't have any labels here all right so right below the uh, list box, let's add a few another text on um, and then another stack panel. I think yes, this one's orientation is going to be horizontal. So text block now text this is going to be mm, 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 mm. all right so text going to be matte um, font size going to be 30 
and color it's going to be blue. Okay. I'm going to copy and paste this a few times. So, science. Let's get a space here. One space to each of them to separate them. All right, so science is going to be orange. Uh, English is going to be red. And art is going to be green. All right, I think we are almost done. Let's build and run it. Beautiful. All right, so now we have our chart graph. I want to fine-tune this just a little bit. Also, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just multiply this each grade by three to extend the uh, bar to make it a little longer. Okay, so I'm going to multiply these uh, each one of these by three. And uh, so it looks nicer. All right, let's rebuild this. All right, that's more like it. Okay, let's run this one more time. Make sure it compiles and no errors. And there you have it. Perfect. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.